Sam and Mike feel like a bit of a distant memory. Oh, that was quite a warm weekend. Yes. Uh, some are still reaping the rewards of a hot summer, though, aren't they? Yes, actually, they are. An annual survey by the British Beekeepers Association has revealed bigger crops from hives <laughs> because of the higher temperatures. Um, go on. Well, you, you, about, you promised an explainer. Well, lots Come of people on. have said, why, talk, why are there wasps on your graphic when well, Graham Tatter is going to speak in a minute when we talk about bees? There is a good reason, because a species of wasp, the Asian hornet, yes. is actually causing difficulty for some bees. Graham Satchel can explain all, we hope. Come on, Graham. Morning. <laughs> Morning, you two. Uh, I mean, the beehive, really. Let's be honest, we did make a bit of a mistake with the graphic, but you're right. Uh, the Asian hornet's wasp is a bit of a threat uh, to the bee, particularly in the southern parts of the country. We are in the north, the glorious Northumberland this morning between Morpeth and Annick. Uh, and with me, I have John uh, Hobra, who is the proud owner of five beehives that we have here. We're not getting the bees out this morning, are we? Because well, it's much too cold for them at the moment. They're trying to keep the temperature up for the winter. And if we take over to open them, I think we'll stop the breeding and that would be a difficulty for, for the hives to get through yeah. the world. But nonetheless, we're wearing this very good uh, <laughs> gear just in case. <laughs> now, the story this morning is that honey yields are up uh, by 30%. Why are they up? They're up, I think, because the summer was good um, this time. And they're up from, I think, the average last year was about 24, 25 pounds per hive. And it's 30 plus this year. Um, but that's probably part of the... The, the temperature that we had in the very good summer we had. We're talking about the Asian hornet's wasp being a threat to the bee. The bee numbers are actually down, aren't they? A, a third in a decade. I mean, it's a really big, big, the bad story. The bee is a big problem, and we're losing them. I mean, local apiaries around here lost 50% of their colonies yeah. over the winter. It wasn't just the bees from the east, but it was other things as well. And they've got to be strong to come through into the into the spring in order to be giving honey yields. John, thank you very much. We're going to have a quick chat with David, the farmer here now, uh, who planted, David, uh, uh, 90 acres worth of flowers this summer. Is that right? Tell me what you did. Yes, we um, in May time, we planted 90 acres of Basilia. Our crop rotation on our farm would allow us to carry um, overwintered summer fallow, which would just be last harvest um, stubble. So as an alternative to that, we decided to grow some uh, 90 acres of Basilia, which would be beneficial to our soils and also it provide nectar for insects and the bees. Part of the reason bee numbers are down is because of farming practices, isn't it? So uh, 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 it's partly insecticides, but it's also the way that the farmland is cultivated. Do you think farmers have got this message that bees are vital to the... I mean, they, they, they were 600 million quid, yeah. aren't they, bees to the economy? Do you think farmers have got this message? Yes, I think so. I mean, we want to look after our soils, we want to look after our environment. And whilst we're keen on production, we want to conserve the environment as well in a in a responsible manner. Um, and if we can provide uh, nectar throughout the summer as an alternative food source for the bees, then we're keen to help in that way. David, thank you very much. We're going to have a bit of a honey tasting test now. So John uh, has been joined by his wife, Margaret, who is instrumental in the honey making process. Is that right, Margaret? Well, I did my best. <laughs> okay, that's, uh, we've got different types of honey that you can make here. Look, do you mind talking me through this? Yes, um, this, is, this is the first crop. This is rape honey, and it's like candy. Uh, and uh, that goes hard very quickly. You've got yeah. to extract it and get it into the jar within about two or three days. Yep. This is the new crop. This is for Celia. Uh, this is still ready. And looks if you want to taste it, I am going to try a bit of that. That looks amazing. It's got a beautiful taste to it. So this is the honey that because of the purple plants that David did. That's right. That's right. And it's got an aromatic taste, a lemony taste to it. We really. And it really is. There's something quite decadent, isn't there, about having honey at this time of morning, but it's 75 pounds a hive within a month when the, when the facility was out. And the last one, just and very the quickly. the last one is honey. The bees have to be taken to the heather. It's uh, a, a very... Uh, yeah, that's like proper old-fashioned honey. Yes, it is. <laughs> Brilliant. Thank you very much for showing me that this morning. Well, there we are. So it's been one good year, if you like, for beekeepers. Honey yields are up this year because of the extraordinary summer. But the, take the long view, and actually beekeepers are in quite a bit of trouble and they're hoping very much that farmers will listen to this and do a bit more planting like David has done uh, here in Northumberland. With that, it's back to you. All right, that's it.